Love me. The Word on Wealth with Gary Quackenbush is sponsored by the Word on Wealth Radio Network. The airing of this program by this station is not an endorsement or recommendation by the station of the products or services discussed in the program. The station does not guarantee the results of any investments made by a listener to this program. This is The Word on Wealth with Gary Quackenbush of GQ Law. Gary is a San Diego financial solutions attorney protecting people like you. The Word on Wealth team of financial experts is here to answer your questions and help preserve your family's financial future. Now, here's Gary. Happy Tuesday and welcome to The Word on Wealth today. So, home equity conversion mortgage. We in San Diego, we sit on these homes with these massive amounts of equity and sometimes don't have any money in the bank. Well, that problem can be solved. We're going to be talking today with Shane Sletter. He's on with us every Tuesday. He is a mortgage specialist. He knows everything you need to know about all kinds of mortgages, forwards, reverse, and interest only. And today we're going to be talking specifically about HECMs, home equity conversion mortgages, and answering your questions. If you have a question for Shane directly, you can call you can call into the show, 888-344-1170, and be part of the Word on Wealth with Shane's letter. And if you want his free HECM guide, you're going to text the word REVERSE to 858-683-1716. So that's the number you need to know for mortgages. If you text REVERSE to that number, you get a free HECM guide, or you can get a hold of um, Ken and his team directly, 858-683-1716. Ken, how are you today, man? Jane. I'm doing well, Gary. Yeah, Ken's tomorrow. Shane's today. <laughs> I can't, I insist on calling you. I did that last week too. Shane's letter. I, 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 I'll go by I'll go by anything. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you're so nice. I appreciate that. So, you know, it your name came up again today. It's like every day in my office it comes up again because people want to know they're sitting on gobs of equity in their home and they don't know what to do and they're like i don't have any options i have you know just a limited amount of money i have social security i've got this tiny little pension i'm doing okay i'm fine i go you have a million dollars of equity spend it oh oh no why would i do that i go because life is short <laughs> so Oh, anyway. Yeah, I, I I think it comes down to, you know, what is important to people in retirement? Mm -hmm. What is it that they're looking for? What is it that they're trying to accomplish? And what would financial security in retirement look for, look like for someone? And and I think that's an important question I'd love to kind of talk with you about. Well, you you talk to so many seniors and, um, you know, I'm sure you've, ta you've thought about your own retirement yourself. And just kind of discussing what is it that would be important in retirement that we can help um, your listeners uh, accomplish. Excellent. Yeah, let's do it. Let's talk about that. And I think really, and I'll just I'll just jump in. I mean, there's there's a lot of like you can read articles like there's one in Forbes and it says here are the top four things that people are worried about, you know, and it's. Um, you know, outliving your savings, investments won't keep up with, you know, with your expenses, the rising cost of metal expenses, the death of a spouse. I mean, those are four things I think you you read a lot in articles. We can go into more detail. But I the thing that I have found in in when I've been trying to like figure out, you know, what what are people worried about in retirement? The biggest thing that I actually found is that people are worried about kind of being imprisoned by their own financial situation. And so I look at it almost like they're afraid of losing their freedom because they don't have a job. So they can't like, Ooh, okay, well, I'm going to wait for that next paycheck and do this. Cause they don't have that coming in. They might have, you know, equity in their home. They might have a, a you know, some type of a, uh, an annuity or something set up, but they just don't, they just feel like if there's, if something upsets the apple cart, if there's an ex unexpected expense that they're just, you know, they're not going to make it. And I think people really are worried about, you know, really trying to figure, um, you know, what they can do to be happy. And are they going to be just like paralyzed that, you know, during retirement because they, they just don't feel like they have enough income and enough money sitting in their bank. I mean, that was, I mean, that was really one of the really biggest things. 
I'll tell you another one um, besides, you know, worrying about, you know, am I going to now be kind of imprisoned in my home and I can't leave because I don't have enough money. That was one big thing. Health concerns are really big. You know, there, there's so many numbers, Shane, that are thrown around out there saying, you know, um, in your last several years of, of your retired life, you'll spend $300,000 on healthcare. And I think most people at that point just want to be sick because it's like, oh my gosh, where am I going to get that from? If that number is even real, it is definitely terrifying. And a big thing is, and I've talked to you about this before, and I kind of I kind of struggle with this a little bit, but people are really, really concerned about not spending anything and trying to leave every single penny they possibly can to their adult children when they die. So right. those are right. kind of the Gary list of things people are worried about. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because I just had a conversation with a client the other day um, that has three children. Um, they've been trying to scrimp and save and not go over a certain budget and not do the things that they needed to do because they were so concerned about leaving this huge inheritance to their kids. And when the kids actually found out what the parents were doing, that they were sacrificing having a decent retirement, a decent senior living um, in order to try to give more to them, they said, you know, mom and dad, you've done a great job raising us. You've done a great job providing for us for all of those years. We are in a good position. We don't need your money, um, that inheritance, especially if it's coming at two minutes. The fact that you're not living the lifestyle you should be living. And so they wanted the parents to use that money to live a better lifestyle so that they, you know, didn't feel trapped, like you mentioned. And you know, Shane, that's interesting that you say that because it's really true when the parents are so worried about being really super, super frugal and saving all this money to give their kids. I have found when we bring the kids into that conversation and not like we're going to drag the kids in, but, but I, you know, I'll tell them, well, talk to your kids about that. See how they feel about it. the kids. A lot of times the kids are very vocal about, it and they're going, that's ridiculous. You know, just like you just said, it's like you, you know, you've taught us to be financially independent. We have worked really hard. I don't want your money. I mean, if there's something left, fine. But I, it, as far as I'm concerned, just you spend it all. That's yours. You enjoy it. Um, you know, I've had my own kids tell me that because I go, you know, I'm trying to make sure that you guys are taken care of. And my oldest son, Matt, just goes, are you serious, dad? Are you freaking serious? He says, I'm fine. You, you taught me to be independent. I'm independent. Don't think you have to sacrifice because of me. You've already done enough of that. And I think that's a universal kid feeling. However... I think there's a lot of education. There's kind of an education gap between what can be done because the kids will say, you know, we don't need to scrimp and save, but the parents are feeling like they just don't have enough money to do other than scrimp and save. And they just don't really want to sacrifice. They don't know where to get money. And that's why, you know, I'm just so glad to have you as a partner in the show because there's just, there are, there are so many solutions to this. Um, we are listening to and talking with Shane Sledder. He's a, a an expert mortgage advisor. <clears throat> His website is San Diego Mortgage News.com, San Diego Mortgage News.com. Coming up next, Shane has some really good responses and answers to the questions that we just posed. We'll be right back on the Word on Wealth. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know where to find answers you can trust when you need them. Welcome to the Word on Wealth with Gary Quackenbush. We are here to help you build, protect, and transfer everything you've worked hard for with expert estate planning, trust administration, inheritance, and probate. Call Gary and the team at GQLaw.com, 855-500-TRUST. You're saving and investing for the future, and that's good. Have you ever stopped to think, where did my money actually go? This is faith-based investing with Anthony Wright. Most Christian families don't understand this one thing. The money that you're saving for retirement helps fund the abortion industry as well as other liberal anti-family causes. It's the sad, dirty little secret of American investing world. And here's the good news, though. You probably also didn't know that just a few minutes of your time, and we'll screen and clean your investments for you. There's no cost, no obligation, learn the truth about your own investment mix, then the choice is yours. Remember the word says when God's money is in the hands of the righteous, the people rejoice. Well, we also are fiduciary investment advisor representatives. That means that our firm makes a pledge to always act in your best interest. Go to BibleSafeInvesting.com 
download a free copy of my book, Faith Based Investing, or call me at 931 Retired. And please don't forget, listen to Faith Based Investing this weekend right here on Family Talk. Gary, your team at GQ Law are experts at solving IRS and state tax problems. Talk about that. When people have a tax problem, it tends to really stress them out. And one of the things we've been able to do is figure out how to resolve tax problems. You know, one thing we might be doing is setting up a payment plan or getting a collection delay, maybe getting a determination that the person shouldn't have to pay the taxes at all. We do offers and compromise. We do auto reconsiderations. And one of the things that's a really powerful tool that some people don't recognize is sometimes bankruptcy can be used to actually eliminate taxes when there's certain conditions of the code that are met. So we can do all kinds of things. After we analyze your situation, we can figure out what's available, discuss your options, and figure out which ones to implement, what it's going to cost, how long it's going to take. And we can get people out from under all kinds of tax problems so they can sleep again. That's our goal. Request your free initial consultation, gqlaw.com, 855-500-TRUST, gqlaw.com. Who will you trust with the biggest financial decision of your lifetime? If you're planning to buy or sell a home in San Diego County, do what I do and work with the true San Diego real estate experts. Ken Pecos and the Pecos Group helped me and my family. They can help you. This is Gary Quackenbush of The Word on Wealth. You hear Ken every week here on The Word on Wealth. He's our expert. He's got integrity, exceptional service, deep knowledge of the San Diego, Coronado, and South Bay regions. These are just some of the reasons that Ken Pecos has completed hundreds of transactions. He manages a powerful team of professionals at the Pecos Group. From single-family attached homes to luxury high-value waterfront properties to apartment buildings, Ken Pecos is ready to help you avoid problems and costly mistakes. Learn more online at kenpecos.com. That's Ken Pecos, P-E-C-U-S dot com. Or call 619-977-8419. DRE number 01056969, brokered by EXP Realty. The mic. not alone. Ask for the legal help you need. Call Gary and the team at GQ Law 855-500-TRUST or go online and download Gary's free ebooks and videos. Read Gary's blogs. Call or click to request your free consultation or to talk with a member of the GQ team. That's gqlaw.com 855-500-TRUST Alright. Shane Sletter is a mortgage expert. He does everything from regular conventional mortgages to reverse mortgages and everything in between. And I'm just super happy to have him as part of the Word on Wealth. To call the show and ask Shane your question, please call 888-344-1170. That's 888-344-1170. And you can be part of the show and get your question answered directly. Okay. While you are while you're thinking about calling and getting ready to dial, Shane and I are going to move forward a little bit. We've got some situations where people are sitting on equity, which is an incredible blessing that we have. You live in Southern California, your house goes up in value. It just depends on how long you stay there. Um, people I've mentioned, you know, people are worried about not having enough money, worried about what, what they're going to do if they do run out of money, if they run low, if healthcare costs go up. Well, um, Shane and I have been talking about this quite a bit. And what he does for a living is he solves those kind of problems. So I'm going to turn the time over to Shane and say, hey, Shane, what do we do about these things? Well, thanks, Gary. So, you know, I've worked with seniors for over 17 years now. And, you know, what I, one of the questions I ask them when I do sit down with them is, you know, what is financial security and retirement for you? What does it look like to you? Everybody is different 
and, and what it is that they're looking to achieve. But more times than not, it's the fact that they, they no longer want to have that stress and that burden that they feel that anxiety that they have every um, night when they're going to sleep as to how are they going to cover the bills that come up? If something breaks in their house, if they need to repair something, where are they going to get those extra funds from? And what I've seen over the years are, are people that I've met with who just their health is being affected because of the fact that they've got so much stress and anxiety in their lives due to this. And what we've been able to do through the use of the home equity conversion mortgage is lift those burdens off their shoulders, allow them to enjoy the remaining years of their life, have better health, not have as much stress, be able to, to tap into the equity that they have in their home to solve all of these problems so that they can enjoy what their uh, retirement will look like. They don't have to be a burden on their kids who have to end up helping them with healthcare costs or you know monthly expenses, and they can use that that equity that they've been blessed with. And so, you know, what we want to do is we want to help seniors be able to be independent, be able to continue to live in their homes because that's what most of them want to do. They want to continue to live in their homes long term but give them a lifestyle that they deserve after all of the years of hard work that they've, they've put into it. And, you know, using the home equity is one way to do it. So Shane, let me bring this one thing up. I brought this, this was a situation I had a couple um, within the last month or so. And I had mentioned that, you know, and I'm not, I don't present it like you do because you really know the ins and outs of how this works. But I had mentioned to somebody, you know, they really were struggling, just like we're talking about, you know, they had social security, they had a little tiny pension. It was literally like $110 a month. So it was basically nothing. And she was really struggling. And I said, you know, there is a possibility you could talk to a friend of mine named Shane. He's a mortgage expert. And you could talk about getting a reverse mortgage. And she said, I don't want to lose my home. Gary, I don't want to lose my home. And I, I went, that doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. So I want you to Talk about that just really briefly. Like that was her concern. Sure. I'm going to lose my home over yeah. that. And and that's one of the myths that has, for some reason, hung around for the last 30 years. That is no longer the situation. A reverse mortgage is a lien on your property, just like any mortgage. But the difference is that you're not having to make payments. So because you don't have to make any payments, there's no way that they can foreclose on you due to the reverse mortgage. Um, there's actually lots of protections built into a reverse mortgage to make sure that the senior is protected and that they won't lose their home. You continue to have ownership of the property. Uh, title is in your name, in your trust. Your heirs can continue to inherit the property. So that is not what happens when you get a reverse mortgage. In fact, the opposite happens because many times we have seniors who, because of medical bills, because of falling short on the income they need, start to have liens appear on their, their property, maybe their taxes, maybe you know they're falling behind and have more of a, a risk of losing the house that way or having to sell the house because they can't afford it anymore and having to move into another location. Uh, and that's really you know, what we wanna solve is through the use of a HECM reverse mortgage, we wanna provide extra cash flow to them so that they don't have to have those worries and concerns and can live in the house as long as they want. Um, you know, there's no limit on how long they can reside in the house or how long the reverse mortgage can be in place. And so those are some of the great safety features of a reverse mortgage. Okay, great. And I always like to tell people, you guys, this is an FHA program. <laughs> it, it, this isn't some harebrained idea of some, you know, venture capitalist saying, Hey, let's help seniors borrow money. This is the, you know, these are FHA loans. It's not, this isn't something crazy. These are great. I, okay. So here's my question then. Um, so, um, somebody's worried about they they get a they look into the value their home is worth a bunch of money they can get they can qualify for heckam and maybe it's going to be let's just say three hundred thousand dollars and then the kids are in this panic thinking wait a minute if mom borrows three hundred thousand dollars and and she sticks that in her bank account she's going to spend it all she's going to you know you know do some crazy remodel or buy something or whatever and it'll be gone but then i know you've talked to me about that and saying gary you don't you don't grab all the money at once. There are other different ways of having it pay out. Can you talk about that? Sure. 
most of the time when we're counseling clients, we look at, you know, what are the the needs that they have right away? You know, what is it? Maybe they have some credit card debt they need to pay off. Maybe they need some work done on the house. And that's usually when we take a lump sum of money for them to do that immediate work that they need. But most of the time, the money is left in a line of credit where they can utilize that anytime they need it to pull money out for living expenses, for unknown expenses. Um, they can do a certain amount per month uh, and have that automatically go into their checking account. So I've never run into a situation where the client has ended up pulling all of the money out and, and blown it on something that they're not supposed to. I, I guess that could happen, but that, that's never been a situation I've run into in 17 years that I've done this. In fact, I just had um, a consultation this morning with a client uh, that had done a reverse mortgage a couple of years ago and their financial advisor. And this is a great example of how even people who have money in retirement can utilize a reverse mortgage to benefit them. Because what our discussion was, was they said, okay, we need about $8,000 every quarter to cover our expenses and our unknowns. And, you know, we're thinking this year that we're going to tap into our line of credit, which they have not had to tap into for the last two years. We're going to tap into that and not take the money out of our other retirement accounts. And the advisor was saying, well, that's a great idea because what that's going to do is that's going to allow those other accounts to recover, have more time to gain back some of the losses that we've seen over the last couple of years. And because of the fact that you were drawing that down, let's give that a reprieve and let it recover and then take the money out of the line of credit. But what's great is the line of credit over the last two years that they had not used it grew by $50,000 that they now could draw out in addition to what they initially had available. So now they had more money available. They could take the money out for the next year, two years, let their retirement account recover. And then every year we are going to get together, myself, the clients, and the advisor, and look at the strategy that's involved in how we should point, be pulling this money out. So many times it is a coordinated strategy with the funds that you might already have available with your advisor to make sure that we're drawing those funds out properly and it's giving you the, the best benefit of using the reverse mortgage. You know, talking about involving other professionals in there, just this gets me super excited and super confident that um, that's the thing, Shane, that I really love about the way you deal with clients. It's like, you know, if if your financial advisor will come in with you, that's great. We can, because that's part of this whole financial plan to put together and have this this reverse mortgage is heck I'm there available to, to, you know, put some funds in it kind of, it, it, by the way, Shane's contact number. I want you guys to have this 858-683-1716. Okay. If you're going to buy a home, if you're thinking about buying a home, you think about refinancing, think about a reverse mortgage, you're thinking about trying to get money out of your house for any of this 858-683-1716. You don't need to know any other number. 858-683-1716. What what this reminds me of, and this is kind of sound kind of funny, but I just got solar on my house. There's a battery. So I have three power sources. I have the SDG and E. I have the panels on my house and I have a battery. And there's this little app that I can look at it and see mm -hmm. that at noon, the panels are charging more than I need. It's putting my, it's putting power into the battery. And then at night, the battery is feeding, but if the battery is going down too fast, then it takes power out of the grid. And I'm looking at this like, okay, here's three sources into Gary and Cheryl's house. I don't ever have to worry about running out of power. You can shut it off at San Diego Gas Electric or the whatever. And here you have your situation where somebody's coming to you and saying, Shane, I need to figure out what, how am I going to have money for the rest of my life? I don't want to outlive this. I want to have enough money available. I want to be able to travel and have that freedom. What do I do? And you look at it and go, well, you have social security and you have your pension and you've got a gob of equity. Let's figure out a way to make that into something that is usable and spendable. And I, I just love that you are, you're like this backup battery for people. It's this other source of income that you know, people are blessed with all this equity and now they can take advantage of it because they can just talk to you and figure that out. I just think that's fantastic. One minute. I think, I think that was a, a great uh, way of putting it, Gary, because it, it is a backup plan. It's giving options. It's looking at, you know, the best ways to structure this and be able to provide clients with, with ways to have a successful retirement. 
If you guys have any questions on this, give Shane a call, 858-683-1716. You can call him. You just ask and say, hey, can I have that guide? He'll send you a free Heckam guide. His team is awesome to work with. Shane's a great guy. And you can see he knows his stuff. He will work with you, with your advisors, with your family, whatever you need so that you can see that you can get this back up, this other source. you got equity. Take advantage of it. Don't just sit there. Figure out what you can do with it, 858 858- 683-1716. Shane, I hope you have a great rest of your week and um, we'll get back with you uh, next Tuesday right here on The Word on Wealth. Thanks, man. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Gary. All right, we'll be back in just a minute right here on The Word on Wealth. We've got answers. This is The Word on Wealth with Gary Quackenbush of GQ Law. Gary's here to give you peace of mind with expert estate planning, trust administration, inheritance, and probate. Call Gary to build, protect, and transfer your wealth. 855-500-TRUST. GQLaw.com. Have today's economic conditions and high inflation made it difficult for you in retirement? Hi, I'm Shane Sletter, the mortgage advisor on The Word on Wealth. You hear me with Gary Quackenbush answering your questions every Tuesday at 2 p.m. For over 20 years in San Diego, I've specialized in home financing solutions for seniors as they get older and their families. If you qualify, a reverse mortgage allows you to convert part of your home equity into either a lump sum, line of credit, or much needed monthly income. You're insured and protected against ever owing more than the value of your home. And you don't have to sell your home, give up title, or get new conventional mortgage financing with monthly payments. The program is designed to make it easier for seniors to qualify. I will walk you through every step of the process To receive a free reverse mortgage guide by mail, text REVERSE to 858-683-1716. Or give me a call on my direct number, 858-683-1716. Licensed with the state of California, NMLS ID number 239-958, DRE number 0117-4642. A friend about this broadcast outreach, The Word on Wealth, with Gary Quackenbush of GQ Law. Call or click to request your free initial consultation or to talk with a member of the team. Call Gary at 855-500-TRUST, gqlaw.com. Okay, just as a reminder, you got Shane Sletter, who's our Word on Wealth mortgage advisor. His number is 858-683-1716. Um, when I talk about reverse mortgages, um, 
sometimes people, I don't know, it's just kind of, there's these myths that we just need to bust them because they don't make any sense. In fact, um, some of them are literally 50 year old myths that just, they don't make any sense anymore. They don't even apply. So get rid of the myths, get the truth. The thing, what I want you guys to feel comfortable with is anytime I have an advisor on the show, um, I trust them. And everybody that I have on the show is willing to provide an initial consultation for free. You just have to tell them that you listen to the show. So with Shane, I don't, a lot of times we, you think of a mortgage guy and you go, okay, mortgage, that means I'm going to buy a house. So I think you should go talk to him and see what I qualify for. Let's look at that. And most real estate people will tell you that if you're going to buy a home, see what you qualify for. And then you can start looking for something in your price range. With the reverse mortgage, it's a different story. So, I mean, you can do a reverse mortgage purchase. You could actually buy a house with a reverse mortgage, which Shane does that, which is complete. It's it's so cool to actually buy a house using a reverse mortgage, but that's another Shane question. He's the expert with that stuff. So with the, with the reverse mortgage thing, it, to figure out even options. I mean, I had a case... Um, it was within the last year. So we had this case where there, it was a, had to do with probate. Somebody had passed away. And then there was these, there were mortgages on this house. There were mortgage liens. It was very interesting. And basically the, the deal was, you know, what, why there were three different reverse mortgages on this home that were taken out at different times and what were they for? And, and the other side did not understand at all anything about reverse mortgage. They didn't understand what they meant. They didn't understand what they did. They were they said all these things that were like these old wives' tales, these old fairy tales about you know reverse mortgages being bad for people and all that. It was really it was kind of I mean because I'm kind of more in the industry. I was not laughing at them, but it's like you you dude you gotta really you gotta really do your research because you're just totally way off way off base. So what we ended up seeing was this woman owned this house. And when her husband passed away, there is a mortgage on the house. Well, husband passes away, it means his social security goes away. So she gets less money. His pension goes away. So she gets less money. He didn't have life insurance. So basically she now, as Shane and I were talking about early in the show, this woman now, a widow, did not have her husband's income anymore. And she was in the house with a mortgage on it. You know, what a terrible situation. The utilities are about the same. Her food bill went down, but the costs are really very, very similar, even though it's only one person now. So she was really stressed out what she did. She got some great advice and was of the age and qualified for a reverse mortgage. So she got a reverse, a reverse mortgage, paid off the mortgage on the house. So she had no, she got rid of the mortgage payment by getting a reverse mortgage. And then she got, a little bit more money. It was like a lump sum of like $50,000. Well, this was quite a long time ago. So the question of the other attorney that was all upset and annoyed, and it was the heirs saying, oh my gosh, you know, she got talked into it and whatever, is she had to replace the roof on the house because the roof was leaking and they couldn't afford a new roof because they just didn't have that much money. So she replaced the roof and then she did some home repairs and, you know, and then had a little bit of a little bit of other money to put in the bank, but it was, you know, $50,000 in cash. So the alarm that, you know, she'd borrowed $250,000 out of her house, blah, 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 it's like, yeah, 200 just to pay off the mortgage that her husband left her with, which is fine. And then the 50,000 was to do repairs on the house. Then there was another reverse mortgage later, you know, many years later, she took out another reverse mortgage. This one was for, um, what was it? It was like $350,000. So now the attorney's adding him up and goes, okay, she got a $250,000 reverse mortgage and then a $350,000 reverse mortgage. So now it's up to $600,000. And her son is the one that talked her into it and all that. And I'm, I'm going, okay, whoa, time out. The new mortgage, the three fifty, dollars was to pay off the other reverse mortgage, which was two fifty. dollars Plus there was some interest on it over the last six or seven years. So that was the two fifty dollars <laughs> plus interest was now paid off with the three fifty. dollars and that gave her not quite $100,000. What did she do with it? So literally it went on and she'd done this three different times. But there was all these misconceptions about that reverse mortgage. And I learned so much that she actually was meeting with advisors 
And she had her son helping her out and they were going through and figured out systematically what did mom need? She had some healthcare costs because her income was nothing. She didn't have enough money really to get by unless she wanted to start you know, asking her kids to give money and all that. And the kids would have done it, but they were more than happy to find out that mom was independent and figuring out how to get equity out of her house because it wasn't like the kids earned the equity. Nobody earns equity. You maintain the house and keep it. And you, by good fortune, you live in an area where the property goes up in value. So I just thought, you know, that for me was like this positive reverse mortgage thing. Um, and, and it and it happens all the time. I, you know, in, in the world that I live in with people sitting in homes with gobs and gobs of equity, there are, there are ways to get rid of the mortgage payment. There are ways to get money out to borrow. But I always want you to have a consultation first. So I recommend Shane Sledder. It's Shane with two N's, by the way. Um, and his more, his number is 858-683-1716. If you really don't want to talk to him, you can text the word reverse to that same number, 858-683-1716. Either way, they're going to send the information to you that you asked for, and you're going to be happy that you did. Moving on to some things that I knew all about and love, and that is, um, <laughs> oh, you guys know I hate do-it-yourself stuff, right? Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. So I and it's I don't hate people that do things on their own. I am a big old DIY guy. I I do woodworking. I do auto repairs. I do home repairs. I do home remodels. I do all kinds of stuff for myself. And you know what's wild is if I do. If I repair my car, I know whether I did it right or not because it either works or it doesn't, okay? Because I can get in the car and I can start it up and go, yeah, that worked. I have a boat, this little um, ski boat that we've had for like 25 or so years. I've rebuilt the engine a couple of times, the transmission, redid the whole inside. I mean, it's just like this old, old boat. Well, if I do a repair on that, a DIY, I may have a boat mechanic that just laughs at me and goes, Gary, seriously, just have a professional do it. Well, I know whether the repair works and you know how I know? Because I turn the key and the engine starts and it runs again and the cooling works and the you know water-cooled exhaust and all that stuff works and it tows my kids and grandkids around the bay. I know it works. Okay, with an estate plan, if you start doing certain DIY things to yourself first, you don't really know if it works because it you the test of it is if it works, then your children, your heirs, will not have so many dang problems after you pass away. So you don't know how to test it because you won't be here. And that's the weirdest thing about estate planning. So the only way to get an estate plan done right is you have to fire hire somebody that you trust to do the work for you. And if you trust them and they you feel like they know what they're talking about and you feel comfortable with what they're doing, then hire them to do your estate plan. Listen to their advice and you have to feel comfortable with it. If somebody that you're trying to hire to do an estate plan is saying, just trust me. Just trust me. It's too complicated for you. Just, you know, you don't understand. It's okay. Just trust me. That's baloney. I'm sorry. Um, the estate plan should be easy to understand. Maybe you don't have to understand all the legal terms, but how it works, how it functions, why there's the different parts to your trust. I really believe everybody that gets a living trust should understand how it works. Okay. That's my goal. That's what I do with my clients. Now, this here's a disaster story. It's called the DIY disaster. What happened is the the person that was doing it um, got some software, and it the software said that here that to do a will, and then to do a trust, and to do a healthcare power of attorney, and to do a financial power of attorney. And what the person noticed when they started doing all these documents is that. The will has somebody in charge of the will. That person is called the executor, the personal representative, okay? The trust has somebody in charge of the trust. And the person that's dealing with the trust, the personal representative is the trustee. And then the power of attorney is dealing with the money and stuff like that. And it has a person in charge called the attorney in fact, the personal representative, okay? So now you have a, a power of attorney that deals with money and finances and real property and stuff. You have a will 
that says when I die, this property goes to my kids or to my trust or whatever. And then you have a trust that says when I die, all my property goes to my kids and all that. So they looked very similar. One what this DIYer did is he decided, you know, this is stupid. Why should we have a trust and a will and a power of attorney? And they all say basically the same thing. This person has authority to do with my stuff and to give it to my kids when I'm dead. So he just combined them all together. Actually didn't even make it just one document. He stringed them all together, cut out the middle pieces and and, and just chunked it all together. So it really read, it was a, a will power of attorney trust all in one big long document. We had to go to probate court. We had to sort it all out. and. I'm going to tell you coming up next what the result was in court. It cracked me up, but it kind of like I was a little vindicated in saying, don't mess with legal documents. There's a reason they exist. There's a reason they say the things that they say. Coming up next on The Word on Wealth, I'm going to give you the conclusion of my case of the combined documents right here on The Word on Wealth. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know where to find answers you can trust when you need them. Welcome to the Word on Wealth with Gary Quackenbush. We are here to help you build, protect, and transfer everything you've worked hard for with expert estate planning, trust administration, inheritance, and probate. Call Gary and the team at GQLaw.com, 855-500-TRUST. Gary, how do you and your team help our listeners avoid probate? Well, first of all, probate is a process that attorneys, judges, and sometimes contesting parties. And so we try to avoid probate at pretty much all costs. The way we do that is setting up living trusts, setting up properly documented wills, putting the property like houses, cars, bank accounts in that trust so that it avoids probate. Probate is only necessary if the estate plan isn't set up quite right. So we help them get it set up right. And mainly that's done through a properly created living trust. Call Gary and the team at GQ Law, 855-500-TRUST. Or go online and download Gary's free eBooks and videos. Read Gary's blogs. Call or click to request your free initial consultation. That's GQLaw.com, 855-500-TRUST. You're not alone. Ask for the legal help you need. Call Gary and the team at GQ Law, 855-500-TRUST. Or go online and download Gary's free eBooks and videos. Read Gary's blogs. Call or click to request your free consultation or to talk with a member of the GQ team. That's GQLaw.com, 855-500-TRUST. So what happened? This guy did the will and trust for himself. He pulled all the documents together. And the unfortunate thing, it wasn't for himself. He was doing it for another person. Um, so he pulled all the documents, the will, the trust, and the power of attorney, and he just put them all together as one long document. And it was, you know, because the beginning says this is the power, you know, so-and-so grants power of attorney to this particular person. Um, and at the end, it was signed by that person. So he took off the signature block. And then on the beginning of um, you know, in the beginning of the trust, it said, this is the trust that's created by so-and-so and these are the powers. So he was basically taking the endings and the beginnings off and just sticking it all together. It's this big, long document that kept kind of reading on and on. So um, we really didn't know the validity of it. We had to go to court. We ended up filing a probate petition for instructions to, for the court to help us understand, first of all, who is in charge? Is this a will? Is this a trust? Whatever. And the judge, she was very nice about it. And she just said, wow, this is like the messiest I've seen 
um, where somebody decided to just chop up legal documents and kind of put them all in one big long one. And so we had to get a court order where she said that the the power of attorney portion was invalid, um, the will portion was invalid, but that the rest of it we could extrapolate if we took those chunks out. So literally she's doing an order saying, remove all that junk and read from this page to the back. And we're going to, we're going to call that a valid living trust. And she ordered us to go ahead and, and go by what the trust said. And then we got an order saying, you know, who actually got money from the trust because that it, it, it was, it, the whole thing could have been invalidated, but the judge was willing because nobody objected. The judge was willing to accept the document, the trust piece as a trust itself. So a lot of times people say, I'm going to do a living trust because I want to avoid probate. I don't want judges. I don't want lawyers. I don't want the state of California involved in my stuff. And yet they do goofy things like trying to do it themselves. And you got to go to probate court anyway to ask what happened. So that's why we have probate judges to, to basically say, well, this is what the legally, this is what the, the creator of this trust, this is what the deceased person, this is what we're going to say that he or she meant. And notification goes out to all the beneficiaries. Everybody can kind of weigh in on it. But ultimately what happens is the judge is going to say, okay, this is my ruling. This is what happens. This is how you're going to deal with this thing. So um, I, I just, if you really, really know what you're doing, fine. Um, so let's talk a little bit. I guess if you guys need help with an estate plan, just don't do it yourself. It's not that expensive. It, it only, you know, right now we've got it set up so that we can turn it around in about two weeks. So from the day you come in and visit with me to the day that it's done right now, we're on about a two week schedule. If we have to go faster, we can, if you want us to go slower, then we can do that too. But two weeks is about where we're at right now. So if you want to get that done before the holidays, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up, Christmas, and um, if you want to get it done, we can do it in two weeks. Um, but you got to get in soon. We're kind of getting tight. Uh, the number is 855-500-TRUST. So 855-500-TRUST, T-R-U-S-T. Get an appointment to see me. Um, just get in as soon as you can so we can get it started. Remember, we're about two weeks out. So if you're trying to time things out with you know what you want to get done, when you want to get it accomplished, get it done before you do big traveling. Just feel comfortable. Okay, Having a trust... I don't know. There's a lot of ways to describe it. It's, you know, it's comforting. It's, you know, you know, so, okay. What happened to me a couple of years ago, I was going down Miramar road. Those of you that are from San Diego know how Miramar road is. It's, you know, fast moving. It's three to two to three lanes on each side, each way it crosses between I five or I five and I eight Oh five. And sometimes I mean, it's a 50 mile an hour speed limit and people get smoking on that road. They just really start cruising fast. Well, I was cruising on the way to do this show in the radio station. And of course it's in an afternoon. So I'm driving along and all of a sudden the person in front of me just slams on her brakes and I could see I'm in a, I would drive a pickup truck. So above, I could see over her car and see that the person in front of her slammed um, their brakes on. So she slams... <laughs> Thanks, Todd. So she slams her brakes on. The lady in front of me slams her brakes on, hits the person in front of her. Okay. And the person behind me, I look at my rearview mirror and their eyes are gigantic because they can't stop before they hit me. So the lady behind me finally gets stopped and the person behind her does not get stopped. He hit her so hard that she it, it slammed to the back of her car and then it slammed to the back of my truck and I luckily got out of the way and I got, I drove up on the center divider and it made me pass the three cars ahead of me. That's how hard I got hit. Well, the lady behind me that hit me was hit by a pickup truck and the pickup truck hit her so hard that basically the front end of the truck blew up. That what there's radiator fluid everywhere. There was fluid leaking out. The tires are all skitty wampus and the boxes in the back of his truck flew like a catapult all the way across three lanes of traffic and landed on the sidewalk. I couldn't believe it. That's how much momentum there was. It flipped this truck up in the air, you know, like flipped the bed up. So it just like chucked all the boxes all the way on the sidewalk and in the other lanes and people stopped and got out of their cars and moved his junk to the side. But um, the, the reaction that I had, I'm, I'm going to the station and I'm, I get rear-ended. My reaction was really weird. I just went, I have insurance. I have a lot of insurance. I have car coverage. I have umbrella coverage. 
I'm totally insured. So if I'm really messed up, then I'm going to be able to get hospital bills. I'll be taken care of for the, you know, I'll, I'm fine. I'm insured. And that was kind of my immediate reaction, which I really kind of enjoyed that afterwards. I thought, what, what would my reaction be if I got rear-ended that hard and I wasn't insured because I didn't make the premium or I didn't have quite enough insurance? Or if I was the one that rear-ended the person in front of me and just like wiped, you know, creamed their car out and injured their kids and all that stuff. Well, if I wasn't insured or if I forgot to pay my premium or I went, oh my gosh, I was going to increase my insurance, but I didn't, I forgot. That's the day when you get sick. Okay. So I felt good about it. Now, the way I compare that to an estate plan is it's really the same. It's very much the same way. Um, if you, you know, if something, if you go to travel, if you do something where you're going to be out of town for a while and you think I'm going to do my estate plan and you feel like even even if I didn't come back, which would be awful, even if I didn't come back, my things are in order. My affairs are in order. My kids, my grandkids, everybody's going to be taken care of. I will be okay. They'll be okay without me. Um, and we'll just, we'll just kind of move on from there. But if you didn't have that, there's always that kind of in the back of your mind thing like, oh, I wish I got that done. And should I really be doing this? And maybe I shouldn't be quite as you know aggressive with my vacation plans. Um because I just don't have things taken care of. I mean, I feel that way with life insurance, with health insurance, with car insurance, um, living trust, will. That's all in the same thing. Health insurance, life insurance, living trust, will. It's all those things that you, everybody needs to have. And we all know that. If you need help with it, if you don't have your favorite attorney, you don't know who to trust, come in and see me. You can meet me, meet my team, see if you like us. If you don't, find someone else, that's fine. But if you like us, let us help you do your estate plan and get that comfort and insurance that you know that it's done right. And you don't have to guess because it's done right. I've been doing it for 35 years, done lots of it, um, had clients pass away and done the administration, the distribution off of trust that I drafted and funded years and years ago. So I know it works. I've done, I've been all through all phases of it and you'll love my team. So if that's something you want, it's 855-500-TRUST, 855-500-TRUST. Get in, say you heard me on the show. And if it's like you really need to get in soon, um, just call and talk to my receptionist, my secretary, my paralegals, whoever. And just say, I really want to come in and see Gary. I want to get my estate plan set up and I'm ready to rock and roll. I just need to have that conversation, figure out what I need. We'll have that conversation, figure out what, it, what you need, what it costs, what information we need from me. It's not as hard as you think. It's not as expensive as you think. And it doesn't take as long as you think. So let's get your state plan done. 855-500-TRUST. Tomorrow, Wednesday, or whatever tomorrow is. Tomorrow, uh, let's see. So this, so coming, what we got this week is we have Ken Pecos. He's on our show every Wednesday. Ken Pecos is our real estate expert. He's going to talk to us about a lot of different things with real estate. You'll find out tomorrow what that will be. So just listen in on Wednesdays with Ken Pecos. He's our real estate expert. So remember when Tuesdays, Shane's letter, mortgages and reverse mortgages. Wednesdays, real estate, Ken Pecos. Thursday, Anthony Wright, money. Monday, I went backwards. That's okay. Monday, we talk about Medicare. Friday is Finding Joy Friday. All right, you guys. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your week. If you have questions for me, 855-500-TRUST. If you want to be part of the show, you can always go to my website and find out what is the latest, gqlaw.com. And while you are there, I've got free videos on all kinds of different things. I have got three free books and a free newsletter. Um, it's a six, it's a, a leadership essentials newsletter that I put together. There's 12 different leadership essentials emails that get sent to you in a series, but you can go and get those free on my website. And the website are my initials, GQLAW. So Gary Quackenbush. So GQLAW, GQLaw.com. You can go there and get the free books. Um, there's one on Living Trust Basics. It's really good, easy to share because um, it comes to you in a PDF. Two minutes. I've got um, the one on um, different types of entities. What's the difference between a LLC and a corporation and a partnership? It, it kind of lays all that out. And then there's one that has to deal with um, with taxes. So those things are all available for free online. The most popular is Living Trust Basics and Accidentally Self-Employed, which is the one that talks about if you became accidentally self-employed, which is what I did a long, long time ago, 
um, had to decide whether I should be a, a corporation. And I am um, because I thought that was best for liability protection to keep my keep my troubles away from my family and personal stuff. And that was, it's always, it's been successful. So I love it. If you have any questions, give me a call 855-500-TRUST. All right. So the rest of the week, we'll be talking to you. Um, if you want to listen to these shows again, there's it, we're on the podcast. We're on every podcast platform, whether it's Spotify, iTunes library, um, Google podcasts, um, pod, um, Podbean. We are on all of those. Just look One for minute. Word on Wealth with Gary Quackenbush and you'll be able to re-listen to shows and you can see there's kind of a, um, you know, whatever you're looking for, you just kind of scroll through and see which is the show that you wanted to listen to with Gary and you can hear them again. So if you miss me, you can go to my podcast and listen, or you can just come back the next day. We're here Monday through Friday, same time, same station. Um, every afternoon, we're really glad to have you along and hope that um, you have a good rest of your day. This is Gary Quackenbush on the Word on Wealth. Go to gqlaw.com. Okay. So filling in the last few seconds of my show, always know that the decisions that you make are important and they affect people around you. So take the time to do what you need to do along the way. And one thing you need to do is figure out how to get your estate plan done or updated. Make sure it's, you know, it's going to protect you and your loved ones. That's what I suggest. Give me a call. I'll help you out. 855-500-TRUST. Talk tomorrow, everybody here on the Word on Wealth. Tell a friend about the Word on Wealth, featured since 1995, with financial solutions attorney Gary Quackenbush, an expert in estate planning, wills and trusts, and tax problem solving. Gary is past president of the California Society of Tax Consultants. Reach out to us. The Word on Wealth team of financial experts is here to answer your questions and help preserve your family's financial future. The information you hear on the Word on Wealth is for general information purposes only. This program discusses general financial and legal topics. Seek legal advice from a competent lawyer for your individual legal needs. The opinions expressed here do not necessarily represent the views of Salem Media Group or its sponsors. The airing of this program by this station.